ஜமீ ثم الرضا عن ابي بكر وعن عمر وعن علي وعن عثمان ذي الكرم يا رب بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته you watching voice of UK's Darse Quran with Muhammad Nabeed Ashrafi inshallah ta'ala today I will be concluding surah Yusuf and uh, covering other important ayat verses of the Quran of Majid from surah Al-Ra'd and surah Ibrahim as you learned that Sayyiduna Yusuf ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wassalam was treated with cruelty on account of jealousy by his brothers because they were opposing him disliking him because of the extra attention that he was being given the extra love by his father sayyiduna yaqub alayhi salam nevertheless they were all believers and they admit their mistake later on realizing that this is sayyiduna yusuf alayhi salam it is mentioned in ayat number 91 of surah yusuf that they say tawahi laqad atharaka allah alayna wa in kunna la khati'in but they say that by god surely allah has preferred you above us and no doubt we have been sinners now these are words of repentance of the brothers of yusuf alayhi salam so whatever they did towards him was not due to enmity but it was because they opposed him as enmity towards a prophet of god is kufr and renders a person an apostate sayyiduna yusuf alayhi salam despite having been tricked by his brothers and thrown in the well they planned to even kill him initially but they left him in a well he went through a great deal of trial and tribulation but look at the merciful beautiful character of sayyiduna yusuf alayhi salam his words are la tathriba alaykum al yawm yaghfiru allah lakum wa huwa arhamur rahimin there is no reproach upon you today may allah forgive you and he is the most compassionate of those who are compassionate he is the most merciful from the merciful so he forgave them for the infringement of human rights the infringement and the ill treatment that they had displayed towards him sayyiduna yusuf alayhi salam he forgave them and he did dua to allah for the infringement of allah's rights the divine rights this is similar to what our nabi alayhi salatu wasalam those words are the words that our nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam also used at the conquest of makkah after being put through immense tribulation trial persecution being exiled being driven from his home city his city of birth which he loved dearly and then being put through immense persecution 
which suffering did our Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam did not face. Yet when it came to the conquest of Makkah and when Makkah was conquered, the kuffar of Makkah they feared retribution, they feared revenge. That today is going to be a day of vengeance, and the leader of the Muslims he is going to take his revenge. But what did our Nabi say? La tathriba alaykum al-yawm That there is no reproach upon you today. And that beautiful, flawless, perfect character of our Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam of forgiving, of being merciful, of being immensely kind, it instigated so many people from amongst the Quraysh to accept the beautiful religion, the only truthful religion, the religion of justice, of fairness, of mercy, of kindness. This instigated and encouraged them and inspired them to accept the beautiful deen of Islam. Sayyidullah Yusuf al -Islam then says, because he has learned that his father has lost his eyesight due to crying out of separation for Sayyidina Yusuf al -Islam because he longed to see his son. So he wept profusely and as a result of weeping profusely his eyesight it disappeared he lost his vision Sayyidina Yusuf salam's father was also a prophet Hazrat Yaqub salam. and the prophets of God they are mustajabu da'wad meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal he accepts their du'as whatever du'as they make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he does not reject the du'a of his Nabi this is why the Ummati the Followers of the Nabi, they request the prophets of God to make dua for them. The subsequent verse says, That take this shirt of mine and place it over my father's face. Yati Basira. His eyesight will be brought back. His eyesight will be restored this will cause him to recover his eyesight and bring your family together so Hazrat Yusuf -Islam, he could have made a dua this verse of the Quran -um Majid and there are many other verses of the Quran -um Majid which substantiate the beliefs the creed and the aqaid of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that the belongings of the prophets of God, the belongings of those people who are close to Allah, who have been blessed with that nearness, with that vicinity and proximity with Allah Azza wa Jal, their belongings are powerful enough to be a means for them to receive the bounties of Allah, the blessings and favors of Allah. As by virtue of the shirt of Sayyiduna Yusuf al -Islam, which had come into contact with his blessed body. Now, undoubtedly, these powers that are given to the prophets of God, they are given to them by Allah. They are bestowed to them by Allah Azza wa Jal. This is our aqidah. It is not something which they are able to bring about themselves. No, it is our belief that they are empowered by Allah. So he then takes this kameez and when Sayyiduna Yaqub salam, he places it over his eyes, his eyesight is restored. So this proves that relics, what we call the barakat, belongings of the Prophet, they are a means of shifa for others. And this is substantiated by many verses of the Quran. So if, if those relics, those belongings that come into contact with their body are so blessed and are able to perform these extraordinary acts of restoring one's eyesight, providing one with a cure or remedy from an illness, then imagine their blessed bodies themselves, how much power they have to cure the ill, to ward off evil, to remove difficulties. When Sayyidina Ayyub uh, Islam was being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he could have made dua, but Allah azza wa jal says to him, to demonstrate that he empowers his servants. He says to him, Urkud bi rejlik. This is in the 23 Jews, 
23rd juice in Surah Sad that stamp your foot onto the ground. This is a water which is good for your drinking and for bathing. With this you are able to bathe and it is cold water for drinking. So how did it come about? After he rubbed his foot onto the ground. Demonstrating once again that Allah has empowered the Prophet Sallallahu Sayyiduna Yaqub alayhi salam, it mentioned in the subsequent verse that when the car caravan departed, when the caravan left Egypt, Sayyiduna uh, Yaqub alayhi salam was in Canaan, which is hundreds of miles away. It mentions that he, their father said, in Qala Abuhum, inni la ajidu riha Yusufa, that I surely am able to smell the fragrance of Yusuf Islam. He, this, these are the words of Sayyiduna Yaqub Islam recorded in the Quran Majid, which demonstrates once again that the pro prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal have been bestowed with special powers, special powers of seeing, special powers of smelling, special powers of whatever they touch. Then with the izn of Allah, they are able to perform miracles. But these are powers which are like lightning, meaning they show themselves and sometimes these powers are concealed, they remain concealed. So that's why when people object and they say, why did the Prophet not do such a thing on such an occasion? Because at that time it was concealed. When Allah wants this to be revealed and shown and demonstrated to the, uh, to the followers of the Prophet, then this is then manifested. Otherwise, it remains concealed. It is mentioned in the tafsir that a sweet fragrance had emanated from the blessed body of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. That his father was able to smell him from hundreds of miles away. So these qualities, there's no fixed time for them to appear. So normally they remain concealed, but when Allah Azza wa Jal wills, then they are shown. It says that when a bearer of glad tidings when he came and Jal Bashiru Al Qahu ala Wajhi, he laid that shirt on the face of Yusuf of Yaqub alayhi salam al qahu ala wajhi for the basira. The eyesight was returned. The eyesight of Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam, he it returned. Upon which Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam says, Alam akullakum inni a'lamu min Allahi ma la ta'lamu. Did I not say to you that I know from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what you do not know? So this is how Sayyiduna Yusuf salam and his brothers they make up in the concluding ayat of Surah Yusuf it is mentioned that this is the path Allah says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that say that this path hazi sabili adru ilallah it is this path that I call you towards Allah this is my way and ala basiratin ana wa man ittaba'ani wa subhanallahi wa ma ana min al-mushrikeen and me myself and those who follow my footsteps who have insight this is my path and i invite you to that path and allah is exalted wa subhanallah he is pure and i am not an associator Meaning that the prophets of God are in no time ever idolaters, not even before the appearance or announcement of prophethood, and not even after announcing prophethood. The Prophet and all the other prophets, they never conceal their faith. They always make their faith, faith clear and they are outspoken. It is impermissible for a person to conceal his faith. We should be revealing and demonstrating our faith through our words, through our deeds, through our actions, through our appearance. You know, we should even look like Muslims. You know, sometimes you walk past people and you notice that, you know, they don't look like Muslims until they have said, Assalamu Alaikum to you. But if a person is wearing a covering on the head, he has the Sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his face, a full beard, Islamic beard, then he looks like a Muslim, then you will 
easily say assalamu alaikum to that person whereas you would be reluctant to say it just looking at a person's color because muslims are of all colors all over the world we have muslims and it is the appearance of a muslim which outwardly shows that he is a muslim respectable viewers and listeners stay with us i will join you inshallah after a very short break assalamu alaikum <laughs> Shah. Sure.